Hello sweet friends, this is Tracy. Welcome to today's video. I am sharing some hand painted projects with you. I have many requests to share more painted projects, so that's what I'm doing. Now guys, apples are not just for teachers. You can decorate with them. I love them. You know, my country heart does love apples. I kind of have a lot of them in my home. Anyway, if you are new here, my name is Tracy. I love to share crafty ideas with a bit of rustic country charm. I hope that you consider subscribing to my channel before you leave today's video. If you're returning, welcome back. I am so glad to see you. All right, guys, let's go ahead and get started and let me share what I have for you today. This apple project is using some landscape timbers. Now these we had on hand, but you can find landscape timbers at any home improvement store like Lowe's, Home Depot, that type of thing. And so what I did is I had my husband cut them down to size one of them this is uh, three inches and this one is four inches and i just took my hand sandpaper and just kind of you know uh took off a bit of the roughness and the paint i'm going to use is this crimson color of chalk paint uh, by waverly i picked that up at walmart and so for the tops of my apples i'm using these uh little cut stems that i got a bag of them from the dollar tree but you can always you know go out in your yard and see if you can find any sticks now, uh, for the paint, I just gave them two coats of the crimson color chalk paint. I just chose this color, uh, not any particular reason. It's just what I decided to use. And so uh, I let that dry in between that. And we're going to decorate these up. You could saw, you know, see by the picture, we're just going to add some fun, uh, fun things and uh, make these apples really cute. So then now to attach the small wooden uh, stems to the top of my apples, I'm just using a combination of Fabri-Tac glue as well as some hot glue. The Fabri-Tac is the uh, permanent hold and then the hot glue is like the instant hold. And then I'm going to decorate the tops of these small apples with just some fun things. I just have some Excelsior. I have some uh, faux ivy garland for the leaves. I also have some um, fun fabric that I'm going to be using to make a small messy bow and just make these little apples just so cute and fun. I do usually splatter paint my painted projects, but for some reason I just wasn't in the mood to do a splatter paint. I know, gas. <laughs> anyway, so what I decided to do, I just have this small white ink pad and I just ran it across like the high parts of the timber and just kind of highlighted the edges of it a little bit. But you know, splattering would work as well. So for the little messy bow, for the top of my apples, I'm just using some muslin fabric as well as some gingham fabric and then just some black and white polka dotted fabric. Um, you know, just get this at any craft store, any place that is uh, uh, has fabric sold on the bolt, you usually can find these types of fabrics. Anyway, so I do like to tear my fabric to give a, a, a ragged, jagged edge. And so then I just have these strips of fabric, they're probably about, mm, I don't know, six inches. And so I just kind of crisscross them here and just going to make a, uh, just a bow for the tops of my apples. And then I'm also going to include some raffia because no country project is complete without some <laughs> raffia. I love me some raffia. And uh, so anyway, uh, sometimes if the uh, strand is just a little thicker than what I like it to be, uh, I will like pull those apart. Raffia is, for me, it's very easy to work with. And so a place right now that I can 
can find my raffia. Uh, the raffia that I do like is in the Walmart craft section. I do like that raffia that you can get there in the Walmart craft section. Anyway, so then what I'm doing here is just uh, trimming off with my pinking shears. Uh, I am just trimming off a bit of the fabric because I do leave it long uh, on purpose so that I can go back later and trim it up a, a bit. It's just kind of what I like to do, just kind of sharing that tip that's what works for me uh, I have my fabric on my ribbon to be just a little bit longer so then I can go back and clean it up and where it looks really nice and so then what I'll do is I'll just glue it right there uh, you know right there beside the stem I don't want to cover up my stem I want it to complement the stem uh, for my apple I think these would be so cute as a little gift for an apple lover or for a teacher or to uh, be like a, a small shelf sitter or something like that. I just love the way that these turned out and I cannot wait to make some more for the fall season. All right, guys, let me share my next apple project. This apple project is using one of the apple wooden boxes from the Dollar Tree. Now, my grandson, who is in first grade, he was a little nervous for Meet the Teacher Night. And so I suggested, hey, let's make a little teacher gift just to take to her to kind of break the ice. And he was cool with it. I'm using one of these apple boxes from the Dollar Tree, as well as some primary red color paint it's acrylic paint and I just painted my apple box with two coats of this red paint and then you know let that dry Next, I'm going to do some shading, and this is the way I shade my projects. I have a half inch flat paintbrush that I dip half of it in water and half of it in the paint that I'm shading. This particular color is just black, and then I blend on a paper towel and go around my project. I wanted something a bit thicker for the stem, so I'm using two of these Jenga or tumbling tower blocks from the Dollar Tree and just giving them a chocolate brown color paint. So then now what I'm gonna do is I have a very loved, very thin paintbrush. Guys, this paintbrush has been with me for many years and it is uh, just a, a small thin brush that has lost some of the bristles and I love it. It's my go-to when I am doing some, uh, you know, adding a bit of highlights to my projects, uh, just doing some shading uh, or actually not shading, doing some highlights for the this particular project because you know what I like to do is do some doodling and some splatters so guys this is how I do my splattering and thank you so much to all of my sweet friends that love it as much as I do what I do is I have a, a stiff brush a toothbrush would, would work as well but I just have a stiff stencil brush and a toothpick and I splatter using just some paint. Uh, I make sure that my area is covered before I start splattering because it does get a bit messy. And so for this particular project, I splattered black paint and then I went back and splattered some white paint paint over all the apple as well as the uh, stems of the pumpkins. So then here now, at first I was not going to paint the leaf, but then I um, thought again and I said, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and paint that green because I changed my mind. And so I'm just using some uh, of this color green. It is Holly Green by Americana. That is just my personal preference of the paint that I like to use, but any uh, paints, uh, acrylic paints would work great for these type of projects. 
I love using faux greenery on uh, my little projects and I just have some ivy that I picked up from the craft store, probably Hobby Lobby. And I'm just kind of trying to figure out here, how do I want to place it? Because I'm going to do, I'm going to glue on the stem and then, you know, put the greenery on there as well. And uh, so I have this ribbon that I picked up from Hobby Lobby, of course course and I'm just going to make a small bow uh, just a loop bow and I just pull it through and keep uh, I kind of go a little slow when I'm making these small bows that I'm not going to staple in the middle but I just wanted this bow and so I just get my loops even on both sides and then I will cut it off and then I'm going to singe the edges of uh, or the ends of the ribbon because this particular ribbon is grow grain ribbon and so it does have a tendency to fray if it's grow grain which is um, I guess the material that it's made out of anyway so just running my lighter uh, over the edges of my cut uh, of my cut ribbons just helps with the uh, you know just kind of reduce the fraying of these types of ribbons Okay, I'm gluing on the bow and the ivy, and I'm like, yeah, something's missing. And sure enough, guys, I forgot my fine excelsior. You know, I ha love to use this fine excelsior on my little country projects like this. I have the best luck finding it at Joanne's Craft Store. Uh, I just like the winciness of it, and it kind of adds kind of like a filler or a, a styrofoam um, per se, just something for my... Uh, you know, extra stuff to stick to. So I'm just going to uh, glue this on both sides. I add some Excelsior. I add uh, the stem. I use my uh, Fabri-Tac permanent glue as well as my hot glue. The Fabri-Tac is a permanent, or you could use E6000 super glue, that kind of thing. But this is just what I had on hand. And then that is the permanent hold. And then the uh, hot glue is the instant hold. So then now I'm just, you know, uh, putting on my Excelsior and then my greenery uh, ivy and then uh, for the leaves of the apple and then I'm going to add my small bow to this little project. Those blue clamps are from the Dollar Tree and they open up pretty wide and so I can clamp my things so they have a, a bit to finish drying. So then now I'm just going to make a small card and I wanted to uh, kind of share this tip with you if you don't want to use uh, an envelope or if you don't have an envelope. What I'm doing is I get these note cards sets from Hobby Lobby and so I just want to use this card but I want to make a small pocket for uh, the gift card to go in and so I'm just using my adhesive tape it's just a double-sided tape and it's just uh, on this holder so that it slides pretty easy and so then now I'm just kind of figuring out how I want to put on or put in the gift card this is going to be a small gift for my grandson to take uh, to his teacher when he met with her for you know meet the teacher night and I like to do this I always did this for uh, my boys and then we just carry on the tradition I just like to send a small gift to uh, you know just kind of break the ice kind of thing and then also you know teachers have a very hard job <laughs> and so I always get them a small gift card just to you know have they can purchase things for themselves or for their classroom or if they just need a little break And then I try to get my boys to always sign the card uh, for a special individual touch. I chose not to do it, but you could personalize it with the teacher's name as well as maybe a small chalkboard or write directly on the apple. The, uh, you know, the 
ideas are just endless when it comes to these small little apple boxes uh anyway so what i did guys also is i just inserted some of that crinkly uh you know paper that you can get in the party section and that is what i used uh, and then i stuck the little gift card in there it just turned out so cute For this Apple project, I'm using one of the clipboards from the Dollar Tree. So I'm also going to show how I painted up the checkerboard and painted the apple as well as made the cute little bow. Now I crackle painted the uh, uh, clipboard and I do have a video that shares exactly how I reach this technique using the crackle medium. And also what I did is I just hand drew an apple and I'm gonna take my black sharpie marker and just draw or trace it onto this uh you know this clipboard and then i'm going to paint my apple these are the colors of uh red and green that i am using holly green and santa red uh for this particular apple and so i use a you know my brush and i'm just painting directly on the uh clipboard and i'm gonna have to give it a few coats of uh, you know, paint to cover up and get the coverage that I want. Then I'm using this brown paint. It's called Espresso, and that is the uh, color I'm going to use to paint the stem of the apple. So then I gave, uh, it's probably about three coats of each color on to this just to cover up on this particular clipboard. So then now I'm going to start my um, shading and I'm just using a half inch flat paintbrush. I do have my favorite paintbrushes linked in my Amazon store if you would like to check out the ones that I do like to use for my projects. And so guys, I have shared, I usually use the same technique every time my paint but I dip half of my brush in paint the other half in clean water and then I blend on a paper towel to shade around my project Guys, if you are enjoying this video, I would so appreciate if you would give me a like. It really does help my channel to grow and also lets YouTube know to put this in more suggestion videos. Okay, so then now I'm going to share how I uh, do my checkerboard. And so then I just have this half inch uh paintbrush a flat paintbrush and I go around the edges I kind of start at the top like with this clipboard because I can um, you know I just have to have a starting point and so then I'm just making a checkerboard I know it's so country but, but guys I love it so much and I am so grateful that uh, for the you know to the lord for giving me these gifts and talents and also for this community to share with so many like-minded people guys your comments and your sweet messages and your just your encouragement and you know just by sharing the video by just leaving a comment leaving a like just all of that free stuff helps so much thank you so much for all of your sweet uh, comments and your sweet support it just makes me feel so good okay so then now i have my uh checkerboard painted and so then i'm um, gonna add some more highlights and some more doodling to my apple and so i just am going back over it with some black just to give it some depth
I love to add extra doodling with my black Sharpie markers. I like to use the fine point Sharpie marker as well as the ultra fine Sharpie marker. And they just, it just adds just so much character to my projects and it's what I love to do. And I am so grateful that so many friends love it as well. Then just using a, a liner brush as, and some white paint, I'm just going through and just making some extra doodles, some highlights. I really think all these extra details is what brings uh, a painted project to life. And so I am just, you know, so grateful. You know, I know I have, I say it so many times, but I can't say it enough. I have these talents because of the Lord. Nothing is of myself. He gives me everything that I have. And um, I'm so grateful to have this community of like-minded uh, fellow crafters who love the same things. And I hope that I inspire you just a bit or bring you a bit of entertainment by watching my projects. Okay, so then now I'm going to make a bow. And so I have this ribbon. It's probably either from... Hobby Lobby or craft outlet. Uh, anyway, so I like to use, you know, the different uh, width of the bows because I think that that really just kind of does help with, you know, giving some character to your projects. So then I'm just making a loop, probably about a three inch loop and maybe a six inch tail. And so then I'm just going to, uh, you know, bend it over in the middle. And then I'm gonna start layering this ribbon on, all together uh, to make a bow. And so I'm sharing my tiny attacher, my little stapler. You can also find information uh, about that in my uh, Amazon store and what I like about it is it gives uh, just a very small staple and so if a person has problems holding ribbon or if you're having problems with your hands uh, the staple does help with layering of my bow and so that's what I'm just doing here I'm just cutting different uh, lengths of ribbon and I'm just going to layer this all together and probably use a pipe cleaner to put everything together and then attach it to the top of my clipboard felt pads that you can get from any store but I got these at the Dollar Tree I'm just going to add four of these pads to the back of this uh, clipboard so that way if um, a teacher wanted to hang it on the wall or on the door uh, it would not scratch the wall or or not um, you know clank against the door or flap against the door that is one of my pet peeves i cannot stand that sound when you have a door open and you have a wooden sign or something and it like clanks against the door oh that just is like nails on a chalkboard <laughs> anyway so those felt pads help a lot and kind of buffer that a a bit and so then what i'm sharing here is my stiffen quick uh, which is a spray adhesive it stiffens up any limp ribbon I love to use that uh, in my uh, keep it you know in my stash to kind of stiffen up any ribbon or fabric that may be a bit limp For the hanger, I just added this School Days ribbon that I got. I had it in my collection. I think I got that at Hobby Lobby. Anyway, I just secured it with some more of, uh, you know, like glue and some more of those felt pads. Those work great. Guys, this project just speaks to my heart. I love all the crackle, all the happy dots, the checkerboard, the doodles, the painting, the ribbon. Everything just speaks to my heart country heart. I love it so much and I hope that you do too. 
Next apple project is my ribbon apples. Now these turned out much cuter than what I kind of had in my head. So let me share how I made them. I just used some two and a half inch uh, check ribbon. Uh, probably got this ribbon from Craft Outlet. And what I did is I cut uh, two strips of like about, they're probably about six inches long. And I took off or cut off one of the edges of the ribbons. And uh, because I did not want that to, you know, like that seam to be, uh, you know, in the middle of my apple. And so then I just glued my uh, two pieces of ribbon together because one, uh, I wanted my apple to be a bit wider than only two and a half inches. And so that is what's uh, why I glued the two pieces together. Anyway, so then I'm kind of trying to make the uh, like indention. You're not really going to see it because I have the bottom uh, covered up, but it just kind of helped me with tapering my ribbon uh, or my faux apple, uh, just kind of tapering it up and I'm going to make a pocket and that is what I'm going to stuff. I just have just some, uh, just some stuffing that you can get like polyfill from uh, any craft store or Walmart, that kind of thing. And that is what I stuffed in the middle of my apple, uh, you know, to, to make it puffy. And so then I just continued to glue it, just kind of tapered it up. And uh, I just like here, I have some stuffing and I'm just using, you know, just something that I grabbed and just kind of help stuff that in. And then the, for the stems of my apples, what I'm using is I have these stems that I picked up from uh, Hobby Lobby in the Christmas section. I think it was in the Christmas section uh, that over there at Hobby Lobby, but you can get sticks out in your yard. I just have all of this stuff, guys, and I just need to use it up. So I'm just trying to use some of the things that I have on hand. And so then now what I'm doing is um, I have my stem and then I just uh, used my pinking shears to kind of give it a decorative edge at the top. And what you see there is I kind of like did an indention in the top uh, just kind of like where the dip of the apple was and so that just kind of made me feel better and so then I'm showing another apple I just put some more stuffing in and just glue that stem down in there and then I just glue the tops together uh, you know so that they make the small apple pillow in my country projects i love to add some splattering so i just have some uh, black paint and my stiff stencil brush and a, a small toothpick and i'm just going around and i am uh, just giving some splattering to my apples uh, but then i was looking at it and i said ah. It needs a little like highlight at the top or on the side, uh, you know, for the apple, how the apples have the little swoosh. So I pulled out my slick white puffy paint and I gave each of the apples a like a highlight or a little swoosh whatever you want to call it, uh, to, uh, you know, one part of the apple. And so I have to let that completely dry, uh, because puffy paint takes just a bit to dry. And so, um, some of the little highlights I made a little bit thicker than what I liked, but it was all right. It's all good. Cause this is just my little project that I'm going to put on my shelf. While my puffy paint is drying on my apples, I'm going to work on my crate that I'm going to put my apples in. So I have this small crate from the Dollar Tree as well as some antique wax from uh, Walmart. And so my favorite way to uh, stain my small wood items is a tip that I got from uh, Junk to Jewels off of Facebook. Uh, this is how she uh, puts stain on her projects. She just takes a baby wipe and just wipes it on her wooden projects and just you know wipes, wipes off any of the excess and so ever since I saw her do that I said oh my goodness this is just so it's so easy and uh, it just works for me I uh, just have a small baby wipe and just you know stain my projects and so then my apples are completely dry now and like I had mentioned earlier that it was just a little bit too some of them are a little bit uh too thick so hey <laughs> we're gonna mask it a bit with some splattering yes guys that's what I did I just pulled out my uh brush and uh toothpick and just you know added some more splatter splatters makes my heart very happy 
Now, uh, to decorate the tops of my apples, I have this fall foliage or this little garland. I think I picked this up at Hobby Lobby, but I can't remember. It doesn't have like a brand on it. I don't know. I've had this in my stash. Like I have mentioned, I have so much stuff that I need to use. So I'm trying to do that this year. Uh, and so I just have this small um, leaf garland foliage and so then I cut that off and that is what this garland has like wire in it and so it twists very nice on my stems and so I just used like a dab of hot glue just to secure it just a little bit. You know a country apple project is not complete without some raffia yes ma'am so I just tied some raffia bows to the tops of my apples now uh, for my crate I have these block styrofoam that I'm gonna cut down a bit uh, because I want my apples to sit up a little bit more than what they did I, they kind of sunk down in that crate and so I just cut my styrofoam down to size I'm gonna uh, be using some excelsior but before I do that I want to go ahead and tie a small muslin fabric bow around you know my box just to kind of you know give it a little bit a decorative look to it and so it's just like a one inch muslin fabric I just ripped to have the torn edges and so then I just tie that in a simple knot I use my pinking shears to kind of uh, make it easier and also gives a decorative touch to it and so then now I'm just gluing everything down I have my styrofoam and then um, cut down the size and then I'm going to Put the excelsior in there um i like the fine excelsior i think it just gives a bit of a whimsiness and i find mine over at joanne's craft store that's my favorite place to find this whimsy excelsior and so then i'm just setting my um apples in you know the little crate and just kind of filling in the excelsior just around just to give it a bit of whimsiness so then uh, now i'm going to make a sign i have some of these chalkboard uh picks labels from the dollar tree uh, the marker is a posca uh, pc uh, one that's the size that i'm using and so i'm just hand lettering apples for sale and so you know me I love my happy dots and so I'm just putting some happy dots on the uh, on the ends of my letters pit berries is just what this little project needed now these berries I do find at Hobby Lobby uh, they're on a garland and uh, usually I can find the garlands throughout the year and if you're lucky that week uh, Hobby Lobby has them on sale anyway so I just twist them off of the garland and then I use the individual picks for my projects and my wreaths and that kind of thing so then now I'm just you know kind of inserting everything together kind of putting some more excelsior I will insert my sign and so that's one of the reasons why I use the styrofoam to have something for everything to stick into as well as uh, you know gives me some height and so my apples will sit up and I love these little ribbon apples and I hope that you do too if you are liking these projects I would love it if you would give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you are new because I would love to have you uh, join my little country family okay this next Apple project is using some of supplies from Dollar Tree and Hobby Lobby the small house is from uh, Dollar Tree as well as these apple cutouts that I did pick up uh, from the Dollar Tree there are several of them in the package but we're just using one the scrapbook paper is from this paper pad from Hobby Lobby and it's in the olive green color and so what I did is I just uh, painted my apple with this crimson red Waverly chalk paint For the stem, I just used some light cinnamon brown color. For the leaf, I just used my holly green. I, like I said, my painted projects, I usually do the same way, especially my apple projects. I just take a, a, a flat paintbrush and dip it in 
paint and water and blend on a paper towel and then you know just give it some shading and so to uh, add some highlight and doodling I'm just using my very loved brush my little detail brush and just going around at the edges just to bring it to life I'm also going to add some splattering I have you know my brush and my uh, stem uh, not my stem my uh, toothpick and just go around my uh, project just to add you know the look that I like and uh, to expose a bit of the wood or just to you know continue with the um, country feel of the project I'm just taking my uh, sanding sponge and just rough you know going around the edges just to expose a bit of the raw wood to uh, you know just kind of tie all of this together these small houses from the Dollar Tree are pretty popular and there are a lot of creators that do have a lot of different designs uh, you know for them and and using them uh, to get the house part off or the wood part off I just took my knife uh, that I keep in my craft room for projects like this and I just slid it underneath that uh, where the wood in the back of the house meet and so that I could get the back of this house off and so uh, then I'll just trace out that on my scrapbook paper and then adhere that uh, to this back of this house oh, just with my adhesive tape uh, but you know a person could mod podge or uh, use Elmer's glue or something like that but this is just what I have on hand I'm just using a fingernail file that I pick up from the Dollar Tree in the makeup se section and uh, just get off any of the excess paper or the rough edges of the small houses. So then I have this brown rickrack that I picked up from nowhere else but Hobby Lobby. I'm just using my Fabri-Tac glue just to glue that down and uh, then I'll move on to what I'm going to do next which is adhere the back of the house to the frame of the uh, you know like the wooden house What I'm showing here is uh, I take just use my sanding sponge and just go around the house if there's any uh, like hangover paper or something like that. So then now I'm just using my Fabri-Tac glue and then attaching the frame to the uh, back of the house. I have these small trim ribbons that I have on hand and uh, probably they came from Hobby Lobby or the Dollar Tree or Walmart. Those are usually the places that I get them and I cut them maybe, you know, about four, uh, about four inches and then I just crisscross them because I'm going to make a messy bow and uh, so I just uh, attach it in the middle and I use a pipe cleaner. Uh, I know some crafters that I watch use jute but for some reason I can't get my jute tight enough so I like to use a pipe cleaner and my needle nose pliers do help with getting uh, my pipe cleaner you know tight and so I like my small bow to like pop. And so then now I'm just, you know, taking my black Sharpie marker. This is the fine Sharpie marker and just giving a uh, bit of, you know, just bringing it to life with the black Sharpie marker. And uh, so then I'm going to start putting my house. Uh, well, my house is done, but I'm going to put my apple on my house. And so I have two Jenga blocks and I just want to give my apple a bit of dimension. I want it to sit up a bit. And so the uh, tumbling tower blocks helps me with that so I just attach my apple to the house I'm going to attach my bow I also add some excelsior because that does give it a bit of whimsiness I kind of use the same thing and I feel like I am like a broken record <laughs> I just feel like I I continue to use the same thing because that is just my look and I am so grateful that God uh, has sent so many wonderful country loving friends to my channel uh, you're 
sweet comments just make my day. I tell you, uh, the majority of the people love uh, who love this look and you leave me the sweetest comments. I get the sweetest messages just to tell me how much you are enjoying these projects and how you are inspired. And thank you so much for sharing with me. So then I'm using that same fall foliage that I used in um, other uh, projects in this video. And uh, I just cut off a piece of that. And that is what I'm going to twist around to give it, uh, you know, just some color. I do realize that it's a little bit thick. So I go back and I kind of trim it off a bit, uh, you know, on the finished project. Now, if you've been following me for any length of time, you know that I love to take a Dollar Tree signs and paint them up and flip them into something cute, just like this truck, guys. I hope that you love this pick and time truck just as much as I do. Guys, these trucks from the Dollar Tree that are new this year, they I think there's a red one and a uh, maybe teal turquoise colored one. Anyway, I used one of those to, uh, I'm just repainting it and then repurposing it with my cute little country designs. Uh, you know, just adding some apples and some fun wispy embellishments to make a pick and time apple truck. Okay, these are the supplies I'm using to paint the truck. Um, I cut off the jute string and then uh, this truck has two holes at the top. I want it to cover up. I'm just using my Max spec, uh, Patch Spackle from the Dollar Tree and just put that in the holes to uh, cover them up because I didn't want those holes. And uh, then what I do is I just take my sanding sponge. I'm, gonna, uh, I'm not gonna use that give thanks part. So I want to get off as much of the glitter as I can and actually it came off pretty good I had to use a bit of elbow grease but it came off pretty good and then I just used uh, I just took my uh, plaster color chalk paint and I painted um, a coat of that on I don't know it just I feel like it uh, my other paint goes on I uh, don't have to use as much as the color I don't know maybe it's a mind thing anyway so I just gave this two coats of the uh, crimson red uh, paint and um, then for the tires I just paint those black just regular black uh, this is uh, acrylic paint that I'm using and the black and the others it's just the color of paint that I had uh, I, there's no preference as to I mean you can use chalk paint or you can use acrylic paint to paint the back glass of the truck I'm just using the color drizzle gray and I just give that a couple of coats um, you know just there with my paintbrush then uh, I'm also going to be putting a bumper on it so I just use the same color of drizzle gray in my paintbrush and I use I try to get the edges of it now what I'm going to probably do with this wreath I mean what uh, with this truck is put it into a wreath uh, probably a fall apple country wreath uh, but I, I closed up those holes because you know you just never know what you want to do with that anyway I'm using this metallic silver paint that I get from Hobby Lobby uh, or you can get it at any craft store anyway and I'm gonna just kind of uh, put some of that on because it gives a glare for my uh, windshield as well as my bumper and so I just take a brush and just kind of put them in put it in random spots where it looks like there's a glare on the glass I'm going to use this color of it's uh, called antique maroon it's an americana brand and uh, i'm going to go ahead and do some detailing or shading to the truck i had the uh, i had an extra truck from the dollar tree that was uh, i was looking at and kind of following the same uh, pattern of what they had the highlights and where they kind of had uh, different uh, like depth and dimension to this truck. Now, what I noticed is that this truck did not have uh, like tail lights on it. Um, I looked at the whole thing and I was like, yeah, this one doesn't have any tail lights. So that's why I did not put any tail lights on my truck, but I could definitely do that. And my favorite way to do 
tail lights is to use red puffy paint and just you know uh, put it on there and then let that dry it kind of gives a bit of dimension to it um, so I don't know there are a lot of people that like tail lights on their trucks but I don't know let me know what you think do you think that the truck needs tail lights on it uh, the one from the Dollar Tree didn't have it but I don't know it looks cute either way For my lettering, uh, it is some God-given talent. I uh, appreciate all of your uh, sweet comments from the friends that the Lord has sent to my channel that loves this style of lettering. Now, guys, this is some God-given talent. Um, I had practiced for many years and uh, it was determined to learn how to paint with a paintbrush. And so I say that humbly. I say that just to be encouraging to those of uh, you that want to learn how to paint with a paintbrush please don't give up uh, keep doing it you know practice on some scrap wood uh, just find a font that you like uh, if you like this uh, style of font um, I did find a free font from defont.com that is very similar it has several fonts in it that you can uh, download and install on your computer and you can print out different sayings uh, and then maybe trace it uh, onto a project with some graphite paper or tracing paper and so then you can paint over it with your paintbrush so um, I will have a link for that in the description box below um, but if you are one of the friends that leaves me a sweet comments, thank you very much because you are greatly appreciated. Okay. Um, to me, it's all in the details on my painted projects. And so, uh, I have a liner brush now. Uh, and so I'm just kind of, uh, giving some extra, uh, striping to the back glass. I just have, a uh, like my favorite detailing brush and just going over and just giving some striping um, no rhyme or reason just kind of going over it and just give it some highlight I'm just using that same uh, liner brush to add some white highlights or doodling to my truck. Like I said before, guys, you'll hear me say this again. It's all in the details for me. And uh, I just think all of these small details just really brings my painted projects to life. Now to add some treads uh, to my tires, I just use my fan brush uh, and some white paint. And uh, I was kind of getting off. It was kind of clumped up a little bit on my paintbrush. And so I just kind of, you know, kind of spread those bristles out just a little bit. So now I'm taking some antique gold paint and just going back around my letters just to give it more highlight. I do this sometimes. Uh, it just really depends on what look I'm going for. Uh, I also go back through and uh, go back in between the letters with my fine Sharpie marker just to add some more dimension and uh, really depth to my letters. For my miniature apples, I'm using this pack of uh, small miniature apple ornaments that I had in my stash from many years ago. I picked these up at Hobby Lobby. The date on them said 2008, so I'm not quite sure if they still have them. Uh, but I know they had lots of miniature ornaments, you know, at Hobby Lobby in their miniature ornament section. Anyway, so um, to get my apples to stick onto my truck, I'm just putting a small hole in them I just used my um, 
paper piercer to stick the hole in and then I just glued the toothpick in there and then uh, to make some of the apples green I used uh, apple barrel spring green color and uh, painted those up and let those dry to get my paint to stick on these slick apples I did take some uh, of my sanding sponge and just kind of get a bit of the uh, you know roughen it up just a bit so that the paint would stick to it and so then now to get uh, everything to attach to my truck is I just cut some styrofoam and painted it the same color as the truck uh, glued that on there and then I'm going to cover that styrofoam with some of this fine excelsior and then I'm going to stick my apples into the uh, styrofoam where it looks like they're on the bed of the truck where it looks like the apples have just been picked and they are traveling down the road and ready to be sold maybe they're going to a farmer's market And I just used some of that same fall greenery garland. I just cut pieces of it off and just uh, just added it to uh, some of the spots. It's wire, so it just sticks very nicely into that styrofoam. Guys, I love this pink and time truck. I cannot wait uh, to make more. I am going to be probably put the, putting this into a wreath because uh, y'all know uh, if you follow me for any length of time, you know that I do design wreaths for a local uh, business. And so this is going to look so cute on a country burlap wreath. All right, guys, here's a recap of all of the projects in this video. I appreciate you so much for watching. Thank you so much for your kind comments and your support of me and my channel. All right, guys, y'all have a great day and God bless.